Hey everybody, Ernie Hatmaker here, and let's see what's going on for May. Okay, so the first week of May, and we've got blooms. Blooms, blooms, blooms. And there are different kinds. You know, there are some marigolds, zinnias, and nasturtium mixed in here. These nasturtium aren't nearly as big as the ones um, that I grew the first year I ever grew nasturtium. But, of course, you know, they're only a couple weeks old as far as, like, when they started popping out. This lemon balm is going to attract a lot of bees. Look at that. Healthy, healthy lemon balm. And then there's a gigantic pot of nasturtium in the back there. Um, it's called the dwarf cherry. So I can't wait to see those pretty pink blooms. And then, um, of course, you know, basil. Most of this is herb and lettuce up here. The kind of stuff that, you know, quick eat and just pull a few of them. Throw in a salad or whatever. Stir fry. These nasturtium. Look at this. Look at my hand. It's pretty big. It's awesome. And then there's more flowering plants and some kale and um, some peppers that I've started. This one is the five color pepper. And I mean, it's really pretty. This is a, I want to say it's a jalapeno because uh, I have a lot of those planted. So I probably wouldn't be too far off if I said that either jalapeno or, or cayenne. And I've got a lot more different types of peppers and flowers and that kind of thing out here. Um, some Alibaba uh, watermelon plants that are getting ready to go into the ground. So anyway, uh, that's what's up on the table. I have some uh, marigold and they're mixtures of different types of marigold. A lot of Cracker Jack marigold uh, seed I bought this year. Um, some spinach and uh, I forgot what kind of uh, flower this is I'll know later there's a jumping spider that's guarding this unless it was eaten by that tree frog so I won't stay here too long <laughs> my friend was clearing out a nursery and so she gave a bunch of tomato plants so they're kind of thrown in also I wasn't going to plant this many varieties of tomatoes this time but because you know they were free why not I still have a few things growing in the totes um herbs and uh, that's a lot of basil that's coming up in there soon some peppers and um other things and then of course you remember the tomatoes and then my cilantro um it got a little bit too much nitrogen so yikes look at this spinach do you see that it looks like a i don't know a little cascade of leaves and they're actually ready uh, i probably need to go ahead and start uh, pulling some of those i want it to um, dehydrate them but they're such sturdy leaves that, and i believe that they'd make a great stir fry and look at the lettuce that's beside them it's actually starting to head up look at that, that little tight head right there there's another one that's forming for that lettuce um the the heads i haven't tasted i don't know how big they'll get because i've always eaten the lettuce as leaves and not the head so who knows then of course you know the onion that i planted kind of in the middle of all of this now most of the uh greens that are in my buckets are starting to bolt because they were winter greens and now they're putting on their seed for summer i liked growing them in the winter uh, they did really well in those totes and um they'll probably be a little bit bitter but i'm not sure i've never had them once they started uh bolting like this i usually just leave them alone that swiss chard now some of these plants have been attacked by the critters over the rain um because the thing about going natural is when you use bt if it rains you have to use bt again because it gets washed off boy they ate that look at that there's nothing left of that chart <laughs> there is nothing left of that chart they ate everything and all it takes is one rain where you can't get out to the garden and those critters will eat 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 
most of this is greens and kales and uh, just brassicas in general and they're all kind of bolting right now um, I, I might pull them out uh, because I don't need that much seed but then I've got uh, some marigold that's coming up in there and that looks like rosemary that is being shut out from the sun just pull a couple of those leaves now so that rosemary can get some light a little better and there's some uh, chard that's growing um, I've planted the, these things kind of uh, as a consecutive plant so that there's always going to be some that's not flowering and look they ate this poor little kale up they ate it up uh, look at the marigolds they're beautiful in here some of this stuff did a lot better than the others um, oh this is the kale that I got from Crystal, from Crystal's Pets and Plants and uh, Crystal's Place. She sent me a packet of kale, and there's three seeds that I used out of that packet for this beautiful mix. And I didn't know which I'd get because it was a, a kale mix. And there's, you know, there's a purple in there. There's curly in there. Um, I thought I thought thought I might get a blue curly vates but I didn't I mean it's actually a very beautiful arrangement I hope it tastes as good as it looks <laughs> Columbine still hasn't flowered yet but it's beautiful all right so here's my weird in-ground tomato root experiment this tomato just a piece of root with nothing on it or stem with nothing on it got put in the dirt and just got watered and I put it beside this pepper here that's in the mulch now and it's actually growing leaves on it it's going to become a tomato plant and no actually two tomato plants in no time and then there are more peppers and nasturtium on the outside here look at these beautiful beautiful green leaves ed these are the indian mustard greens and these leaves are really big oh. They're, they're pretty big. I bet they could cover my face. They're kind of flopping over a little bit and hiding things like peppers. Mm-hmm. There. Hey, do you want to eat this green leaf? There's no bugs on it. Mmm, it smells good. And it smells like greens. There, one of those leaves was covering up um my pepper plant which you know is probably really good for uh keeping the bugs out but not good for the pepper plant there and then there's basil in here with this pepper there's another one of those tomatoes from that nursery. This deal kind of shot up overnight. My 50 gallon grow bag with um, peppers and tomatoes and nasturtium is growing very tall with plants. Um, you can see my golden acorn squash in there. Um, there's a little bit of nasturtium, so it hopefully throws the scent off for squash bugs and that kind of thing. We'll see how that works. Uh, lots of different types of tomatoes that are in ground and in buckets. More nasturtium, which I'm definitely going to be collecting a lot of it and drying it for tea. Because I have no more, and I didn't realize I didn't have any more because I thought I had some, you know, how you put jars in in the cabinet and then you just lose track of what you're using sometimes that happens nasturtium and more acorn squash crazy tomatoes tomatoes and chard the chard is actually going to go soon it'll be dried and then the tomatoes will be left alone this lettuce here looks good this is not a heading lettuce here this is just a kind of the green ice green leafy kind and the few things that are on this side of the uh, trellis 
the two chalices that Ant did previously. Ant's hanging on to the greenhouse frame. Yeah. The greenhouse frame that has tons of tomatoes and stuff like that that I want to grow up and see how well that works. Dahlias. Some kind of celosia. Out there, I've got some sugar babies. Um, sugar babies and a couple black diamond. If you remember, AJ, AJ gave me those. And my pepper and tomato mix. Looks good growing up this weird green thing that ended up after you put it in the ground. No taller than a regular tomato cage. But it cost like $7 extra. <laughs> Another one of those free tomato plants. We'll see how well it goes. Um, I have seen no more strawberries in this strawberry and um, pepper bed. Now it's just mainly the peppers are taking some of the fertilizer <laughs> that have been going to the strawberries in the grow bags. And then I've got um, some brassicas that are in this grow bag over here. Still don't remember what type of lily it is that we planted. But now it is two years old and it is flowering. So I'm really happy about that because honestly it's been a clump of grass for so long that I was getting kind of worried. Past all the stuff in Peppermint Forest, there's that thyme, uh, well, lemon thyme. Over here on the back side of Peppermint Forest are those Imperator Long Carrots. This eggplant has now created a flower. That's the back side. My little spinach field here <laughs> in this box mixed in with a few free tomatoes. Uh, those tomatoes are probably going to find somewhere else. But anyway, yeah, these flowers, I don't remember the name of them. And if it wasn't for the stink bug, they'd probably be a little prettier. But uh, at night, they close, and then they open again in the morning. These onions were free also among with those tomatoes. So, um, not onions, I guess they're chives. They're actual chives where they barely have any kind of root ball or head of onion at all well that pretty much uh is the garden you can see the mullein and the comfrey from here i still haven't uh reassembled my cinder blocks over here but they'll become a bed of their own for something i don't know yet or we might just stack them up and then let it jump off of them i appreciate you watching see you next time